My name is Danielle Daniel, and I am from San Diego, California. Yay. And I'm a doctor of clinical psychology candidate. I'm also a licensed clinical social worker and Blue Diamond in doTERRA. I am currently working on a research project for my dissertation on PTSD and aromatherapy. And I'm set to graduate at the beginning of this year. So very excited. Thank you. And on my joyful note, <laughs> I'm a kitty mama <laughs> to these two adorable kittens, Liberty Bell and Lincoln, who bring me lots of joy and balance in between studying for my doctorate. So before we go into emotions, I want to answer the real question that everybody's asking. Does doTERRA's bal balanced deodorant work for public speaking? <laughs> I'm here to tell you, yes. <laughs> It does. Don't you love how amazing the essential oils are and so versatile? So I'm not here to talk to you about armpits, so we're actually going to talk about the brain. So did you know that we experience emotions up to 90% of the time and often, often multiple emotions at the same time? How many emotions do you think we experience today with the release of the new exciting doTERRA products? So, so many amazing emotions, right? So what are emotions? Recent research out of Berkeley has found that there are 27 categories of emotions with gradients of emotions in between each of those categories. Research also shows that we experience positive emotions 2.5% more than negative ones. So emotions are the result of conscious and non-conscious thought processes that influence our behavior. Our belief patterns developed from birth, our experiences, culture, DNA, traditions, etc. right? They're big factors in our emotional response system. For example, pay attention to the first emotional response to the following slide. Do you feel happy? I heard some emotions, right? Peace, awe, fear, <laughs> right? Maybe you felt nothing. How is it that we have a range of emotions from one image, because our belief system automatically produced a thought or meaning to this image. I really love this quote by Albert Einstein that says, the most important decision we make is whether we believe we live in a friendly or a hostile universe. Our belief systems are so important, and we're going to talk today how essential oils interact into those belief systems. So, First of all, emotions trigger a reward system to feel positive or negative about something. In fact, motivation to feel good or positive emotions guides us in our choices and our behavioral patterns. It motivates us. People who experience more positive emotions tend to have greater success in various aspects of their life. Positive emotions are also connected to numerous health benefits, whereas harboring or prolonged negative emotions have been linked to various health problems. However, negative emotions are vital to our personal growth. How does that feel to know that? They contribute to the attainment of the positive emotions, so they're not to be dismissed. In a large study of over 11,500 individuals tracking, sorry, I got to get on the right slide, tracking 18 different human emotions for 35 days, they found that everyday life is highly emotional. Would you not say that? We would agree, right? So they found that 41% of the time people experience positive emotions, with 16% of the time negative emotions and then a mix of both at the same time being experienced at 33%. The top three emotions experienced were joy, love, 
and anxiousness. Does that sound like your life as well? Sometimes, right? Analyses actually suggest that some positive emotions, such as joy, are likely to inhibit the occurrence of many negative emotions. Other research has found that the emotion of hope is an antidote to negative emotions and a gateway or a bridge from that negative emotion to feeling positive again. So there are many neural circuits in the brain and they're very complex depending on the emotions being experienced. However, here are a few key areas that facilitate in processing emotions. So here's your brain science. We've got the frontal cortex. It's thought to be the core area of your personality. It participates in thought processes, in um, decision making, and is our control center for emotional behavior. The hypothalamus is a central segment of the limbic system, and it's activated in a stress response, profoundly affecting emotional behavior. The hypothalamus connects with the amygdala as well, and the amygdala is where we process emotional memory, and it's also fear-related emotions. This, the hippocampus is where short and long-term memories are stored, and this area is integrated with decision-making through accessing previous experiences in our memory, and therefore it plays, plays a role in the decisions we make and ultimately the emotions we experience. So there are many factors that influence our conscious and non-conscious thought that trigger different emotional releases. A major one is stress. So stress is a major contributor to negative emotions and the gateway to the top three emotions that were experienced, one of the top three, which is anxiousness. So this stress is really crucial. If we can catch it at the beginning, then we have, that's what these oils are for, and I'm gonna show you how to do this. How many of you have ever been so stressed that you reacted negatively to others or a situation where you normally wouldn't have? Or you become anxious about something because of that stress? So it's really that gateway. It influences these various emotional processing systems in the brain, and it starts with the HPA axis. The HPA axis is the control center for the emotional response of stress, and it's a communication network between three endocrine glands. We've got the hypothalamus, the pituitary, and the adrenal glands, and they're modulated by different neurons from various brain regions including the ones we just talked about, the hippocampus, the amygdala, prefrontal cortex, all of which are part of the emotion network. The HPA axis then in turn regulates the response of stress throughout the entire neuroendocrine system, releasing stress hormones of epinephrine, also known as adrenaline, norepinephrine, also known as noradrenaline, and cortisol. These are produced by the adrenal glands flooding every cell in the body, including surpassing the blood-brain barrier. Therefore, this signals this alert, causing a physiological changes to occur and activates the body's survival mode. If this stress cycle is not deactivated over time, that's when it leads to further imbalance in our emotions, and it disrupts the functioning of different regions in the brain, including hypothalamus, hip hippocampus, frontal cortex, and the neurotransmitters serotonin, GABA, norepinephrine, and dopamine, all of which are implicated with anxious emotions. So how can we calm the HPA access? In order to experience more positive emotions, many factors actually help calm it, and one is by allowing the body to restore to its normal functioning state. And GABA is the primary neurotransmitter inhibitor in the brain, and it plays a major role in calming stress and anxiousness by blocking other excitatory chemical messengers, and it is the gateway to inhibiting hyperactive HPA access. It also decreases the nervous system activity, 
And there are a few other factors we can look at to reduce HPA access stress. One is reducing stress in our lives. It sounds so simple, but it really is that simple. Some other factors is like our health and our genetics play a general role in our biological processes. Good nutrition influences um, proper restoration of the HPA access cycle. Exercise, sleep, and essential oils. Essential oils support the, br that support the brain in producing GABA is that I have found in research are limonene, which is high in citrus oils, especially that of orange oil, lavender, copaiba, bergamot, cardamom, clary sage, and sandalwood. Essential oils influence emotions by transmitting their chemical messages through one of these various best method of application for the brain. This in turn can help in restoring homeostasis from that stress response, and then it restores from a chaotic environment, it influences our thought patterns, and ultimately leading to positive emotions or to process negative ones effectively. So here again are the primary pathways for emotional processing in the brain. Now let's look at the essential oils in research that have been found to interact positively in these same brain regions. Essential oils, therefore, can influence and support creating a stress-free environment in the brain, allowing you to experience emotions in a positive way. Upon ending, I want to share with you my five-step process through negative emotions. It's part of life. And number one is to apply an essential oil you know how when you're feeling very tired and you're not thinking clearly and you take a nap and then you're able to think a little better? Essential oils help restore that type of functioning in your brain as well. So apply an essential oil. The second thing I do is I thank the negative emotion for manifesting. You're not bad because you feel bad or feel negative about something. It's there to help you grow. Be grateful it came up. It's like, I imagine it like a weed. Like if the weed is planted, you don't even know it's there, but when it comes up, you're like, oh good, I can now pick you. So thank it and love it. There's no reason to fear feeling what you feel. It's there to teach you whatever you can learn. And so that means you love it, you love yourself. There's no judgment for how you are feeling. That will help you process it quicker. Fourth, you can then command it to leave you by thinking or saying, I now choose to release you from my body. So if it's like irritation, you go, oh, that weed I'm ready to pick, and I choose to release you from my body. And fifth, choose to replace it with hope, that bridge to positive emotions. There is always hope. I want to share with you something a little more personal and vulnerable and how using essential oils and this process really helped me overcome something very difficult in my life. Two years ago at this convention, I actually sat in my seat with very strong pains resonating from my abdomen. As soon as I got home, I was sent in for an MRI which revealed that I had a fast-growing cancerous tumor on my right ovary, which sent me into surgery just a few days later. I woke up from that surgery to learn that I had a tumor and it had taken over all of my female organs. And in order to save me, they had to remove my ability to have children. I felt so much grief and loss, anger, sadness, worthlessness, the jealousy of other mothers, and so many other negative emotions. I had always wanted to have children, and now that that was no longer a part of my life, I had to process, I had to go, how do I manage these emotions that came up from this loss? I know many of you have experienced loss and emotional pain for various things in your life, and though your experiences may be different than mine or the person next to you, we are all united in that we feel emotions. Allow yourself, I want to give you permission to feel those. 
learn from them. What I did is applied essential oils daily. I used forgive, cheer for my sadness, console for my grief, and it allowed me to process the emotions, the negative emotions I was feeling, to process it more effectively and choose to feel hope in other things in my life. I now feel so grateful for my experiences and I live in this hope. And I still have hope that I'll be able to be a mother somehow, someday, some way. And I know that hope is real for you too. Thank you.